Human Beings Hello. It is I, Jay Stedman. Did you know that you can use Slack to automate workflows to streamline your productivity? Let's take a look. So we start here in Slack. Click the name of your workspace in the upper left, then select Tools, then select Workflow Builder. Now we're presented with a menu of workflow templates. Yeah, we can also start from scratch if we'd like. There are also options to view workflows you've created or all published workflows in your workspace. The buttons in the upper right allow you to import a new workflow or to create one from scratch. I love the idea of saving some time and importing a workflow that I can tweak to my own needs. So where do we go to find workflows? Here at slack.com. There are tons of options available here. Many of these options are powerful workflows that allow Slack to communicate with another system you may be using. I've picked a few of my favorites though. These are straightforward workflows that help us boost productivity for remote teams. The first allows us to send a project status update to a team that we may be working with. And here, I can click Download Example, and the JSON is now available on my computer. The second is going to allow us to deliver feedback to that project status update by using an emoji. I'll click Download Example, and that JSON is now available on my computer as well. Let's take a look in Slack. So remember, select the workspace name in the upper left, then we'll choose the Tools menu, and then Workflow Builder. Now we can finally explore the mysteries of the import button. I'll select the project status update JSON file that I downloaded and click open. And then I'll give it a name. Slack informs us that we've completed an import. Now I can start to tailor the workflow. I need to choose a channel for the workflow, so I'll pick the general channel. And I'll choose a name that will display in the workflow menu for my users. I'm able to edit the form that will be presented to a user and I'm going to change the title. The questions are forms that will be presented to the user, and I like those just fine, so we'll save. We've set the channel where the workflow can be selected, but now we need to select which channel or DM the form will be sent to upon completion. In this case, I'll choose the channel where the workflow started, which is our general channel. The blue text represents a variable, and I can rename variables if I prefer. I can also insert a variable using the magic link in the lower right. And that's it. I can save my progress and publish the workflow. Woohoo! Now, let's see it in action. I'm going to select the workflow icon in the lower left. Now I can see all the workflows available to me in this channel. I'll choose the project status update, and now I can fill out the form. Give it a date range, give a headline, uh, Choose my key progress updates, see if there are any areas I need to focus on next, and any challenges that might pop up, and submit. And now you can see that my project status update has been shared with the channel. So that takes care of project status updates. But what if we wanted to provide feedback in a nice, streamlined way? Well, let's head back to Workflow Builder and find out. So we can see the project status update workflow that we've created. We'll choose Import again. Now we'll select the Remote Feedback JSON file. Let's change the name from Remote Feedback to Project Feedback. We'll click Next, and we've imported another workflow. This workflow begins with a reaction. We're going to choose our channel, and then we can choose which emoji we react with. By default, it's the hand icon, and I'm okay with that. So we send a message to the person who reacted, and then when they click a button, they'll receive a form. So here's part of the form, and it says, here's a link to the update. So I'm going to highlight that add your link here text, and I'm going to choose a variable. And the variable is going to be a link to the message that they reacted on, because that contains the update. Great. Now I can see a preview of how this looks, and I like it. I can see the button text, I'm done here, and now I'm going to look at the questions that are presented to my user. There are a few words that I want to tweak. I'm going to use project instead of proposal, and I'll review the other questions as well. Anyone else that needs to review the project? So I'm going to change plan to project here. Great. Let's save it. And um, I think we're good. 
Our workflow doesn't end there. We send a message to the person who's admitted the form, thanking them for taking the time to give feedback on the project. And then lastly, we send the feedback itself. Now, my preference is to send this feedback to the message thread. I have a number of people that I collaborate with, and I want to see all of the project feedback in one place. And with that, we've configured everything we need. Time to publish and see it in action. All right, back in the general channel, I'm going to choose a reaction, search for the hand, and select it. Okay, a direct message has popped up. Let's take a look. Okay, um, click the Ready to Review button if you're ready to review. Great, I click the Ready to Review button, and now I've got a link to the update, and it also appears below. I can click Submit Feedback after I've reviewed to see the form. I click Submit Feedback, and I get to choose my options. I do have concerns. I think that there should be even more Slack workflows in our workspace. And there is one other person that needs to review this project update, and that is Charles Bemby. So I include that and click Submit. I am given a thank you by Slackbot. And then if I go back to the thread, I can see that my feedback has been listed here. So our project owner can see all of the feedback in one thread very easily. That concludes this episode of Did You Know? Make sure that you check the description so that you can find useful links, and we'll see you next time. Whee!